If you have your Bible, let's go straight into the scriptures without taking any more time. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. Then God blessed them, meaning Adam and Eve, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I think every girl that has a fear of spiders needs to memorize that verse. Over every creepy thing that moves over the earth. <laughs> over every small thing that moves over the earth, over every big thing that moves over the earth. But I'm going to read this verse one more time. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. And God blessed them. I've read this verse countless of times. But I want and then probably you've read it many times. The reason why is because it's chapter 1. And those of you who started the Bible reading, you get to chapter 1. And then it's on the chapter 5th. Somehow something happens. Challenges come up. God bless them. The word blessing in most of our terminology has to do with stuff. When somebody gets up and says, God blessed me, we immediately think, you got a new coat, new shoes. Somebody gave you a gift card, you got pulled over, you didn't get a ticket. Um, something really just worked out, you got a date or just you got a car, you got a job, you got a promotion. God blessed me, right? Our view of God's blessing is always that you got something. But this is a very interesting verse because Adam and Eve got nothing. Adam and Eve already had everything. Everything you call God blessed me with, Adam and Eve already had it. All the gold, all the diamonds, all the silver, everything that we ever would fathom, Adam and Eve already had it. How come it still says, and God blessed them? If we study the Bible, we become students of the Bible, we quickly understand that God, word blessing in the bible does not mean things or stuff it actually means to be empowered for expansion so if you're taking notes write this down blessing is to be empowered for expansion and let's just name this talk empowered for expansion so blessing is not things it's being empowered to expand it's almost like God giving his approval and God giving his permission and God looking at Adam and saying I gave you everything but I placed a potential inside of you I placed gifts inside of you. I placed abilities within your body and within the body of your wife that you guys can actually produce a life that will never die. But all of this is waiting upon this moment until I, God of cosmos, God who made the heaven and God who made the earth, God who never ever 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 had a beginning and never ever 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 will have an end God who sits so high that has no enemies people think that God has an enemy named Satan well the Bible says when Satan rebelled against God the angels of God went to fight and kicked Satan out God didn't even come out of his throne why because God does not fight those not his size and there is nobody his size He's God and so this universe, I mean this eternal almighty being looks at two little tiny people and says that I want you to expand on this earth. I want you to turn this earth, take the diamonds, take the gold. I want you to take the metals. I want you to create things. I want you to make airplanes. I want you to make cars. I want you to make houses. I want you to make babies. I want you to make things out of this. I give you the command. 
but you also need to know something before you can expand you must be empowered what is the empowerment that causes men and a woman to expand to maximize their potential this is the empowerment when God who is in heaven who is so holy and so righteous looks at you on earth and blesses you what does that mean approves of you what does that mean have you ever had somebody in authority figure in your life maybe your mom your dad a coach a teacher a pastor a mentor bless you speak things about you or speak words of affirmation speak words of approval not because of what you've done but just into your destiny and it just lights up your spirit it's like a gasoline on an empty gas tank and you go out they didn't give you a dollar they didn't give you a dime but they gave you something a dollar and a dime cannot get approval now some of you may have a hard time understanding what I'm talking about but you know what I'm talking about when you grow up in a family and you've never heard words I'm proud of you when a girl grows up in the family and she never hears words you're beautiful and then her desire for men and she, she will run for any man give her body just simply to hear those very words the words God bless them these words this power is the power God gives to humanity so they will expand if we don't receive God blessed them deep into our spirit the potential God placed inside of us will lay dormant the assignment God placed on our life when we were born will lay untouched and like many people say today is the richest place in the world today has not become a bank it has become a cemetery because that's where poems that's where movies and that's where books that's where messages that's where ideas have been buried and untapped and if you will find a common denominator between people who's never realized potential it's because somebody bigger than them never believed in them and people who realize their potential and live their fullest life it's because they have somebody in their life sometimes it's the parent sometimes it's the coach sometimes it's actually a person on tv sometimes it's somebody who wrote a book somewhere in uk and they read the book and it resonated as someone who spoke to them exactly what god spoke to adam and eve he blessed them it's interesting that this is not the first time god did it this is not the only time God did it when Noah when the earth was reduced to Noah's family and Noah came out of the ark and the Bible says God blessed them why because God then after that told him go and multiply and fill the earth and have dominion we see same thing happen with Abraham and same thing happened with Ishmael Ishmael the guy in the Bible who was not like Isaac and God blessed him same thing happened to the disciples of Jesus when Jesus took a road trip to heaven before he left the Bible says he laid hands on them and he blessed them because he knew for a person to expand they have to receive an affirmation and approval from a higher authority we must understand this principle anything God blesses anything we bless has a tendency to multiply anything we curse has a tendency to wither and this is a very beautiful example from the life of Jesus when Jesus was facing a very big problem of having 5,000 people in his particular meetings but these 5,000 were just men and most likely these men had women and most likely these men and women had children some scholars calculated he had 20,000 people in one meeting now 20,000 people in a meeting today is actually not that impressive if you go 2,000 years ago where world's population was a lot smaller 20,000 people that's a mega crusade have those people with you for three days without eating that makes you popular I mean this is amazing and after three days Jesus wants to you know give them something to eat and the Bible says that he asked guys he said guys do you have anything to eat and the of course they didn't because it's been three days what do you think Peter was doing when Jesus was teaching eating he ate everything that he had 
and all the disciples said all of our lunch boxes are empty all of the water gallons are empty our Starbucks card has no more money I mean nothing we were done it's over Jesus send them back home and Jesus says I want you to find some food and so they went in and they found some food and they bring five loaves five little tacos and bring two fish to Jesus and it's interesting when they bring the other disciples look at that and they say what is this is a joke this Peter's like it's not enough for me it's not even enough for us Jesus and how are you planning to take this this is not enough and they're looking at this thing and they're already sending negative words this is not good what is this it's a joke and Jesus has a completely different view he takes this very little what other people despise what other people said it's not enough what other people say this and that Jesus takes it and I love what the Bible says and he blesses it and it multiplied if God can pronounce a blessing upon bread and it multiplies, I'm sure if he pronounces blessing over you, you too can multiply. And Jesus demonstrated another lesson. When one time there was a fig tree and it bore no fruit. And he turned around and the Bible says he cursed it. He cursed it. I don't know what words he used but the Bible says he cursed it. I am sure Jesus did not use any words that you would use to call a curse something but he cursed it and they kept walking next day they walked by and the Bible says disciples have noticed the very tree Jesus just cursed it he didn't throw a rock at it he didn't took an axe and came to it and says I just hate you no he just opened up his mouth and he just pronounced negative words over that tree and the next day you see the tree lost life it lost its power and Jesus teaches us a very powerful lesson if you live your life in your mind believing God is not for you you will wither you will wither your prayer will wither inviting people to church will wither everything about your life is not cannot expand because the power to expansion exists in this command God bless them you must receive in your heart that God is for you you must receive that when God looks at you he doesn't have bad words to speak against you when God looks at you he doesn't see a face that's chubby fat nose is not good my eyes are not good my cheeks are not proportional if I could only get fifteen thousand dollars to get the plastic surgery when God looks at you he doesn't see the sick you he doesn't see the disgusted you he doesn't see the nasty you he doesn't see the fail you God does not see what you see or what people who you grew up with see in you the Bible says when he looks at us he looks at Adam and Eve and he blessed them he wants us to have the mentality that when we look at him God has smiles with his face at us and he wants to release a blessing because he knows the assignment he gave us cannot stand the chance without his power and that power is not just just poof that power is first of all a mental recognition and connection of the fact God of universe is on my side he's for me he loves me the way I am the way I look for what I've done what I didn't do he approves of me right now right here the first Adam that's what God did to the first Adam but that's exactly what God did to the last Adam named Jesus 30 years Jesus spends as a normal person we don't see one message being preached we don't see one person being healed and we don't see one demon being cast out we don't see no ministry that Jesus did for 30 years in 30 years he comes into the river Jordan he comes out from that river have not done nothing and the Heavenly Father knows assignment on his life is to expand and he takes a big microphone and he announces it to everyone this is my kid and I am very happy about him 
any kid who hears a dad says that about him does something inside of him empowers him for expansion and any kid who hears a dad says about him in front of his friends that takes you to another level I remember when I I've heard this that you know when you bring flowers to your wife in the house she loves you a lot but then when you bring flowers to her work it's completely another world it's another level and uh, and for me I I would rather buy a big bouquet in Costco like 16.99 24 <laughs> roses fresh amazing you got to use that Costco card once in a while I would rather buy the big one and bring it home but go in front of her co-workers in front of her work I, I know it, it doesn't make me look bad but it just it just kind of feels feminine just 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 I don't know it just feels weird and I remember this particular time uh, my wife was at work and I was leaving I think to Seattle to preach and she couldn't leave and I decided not to go to Costco to, be, to buy a big bouquet but just actually Fred Meyer and buy something small I'm like if I'm gonna sacrifice my pleasures to go embarrass myself in front of her co-workers I'll just go buy a, a little bit smaller flowers and I bought you know a, a smaller bouquet and I came got some chocolate and other things and I came into her work and you know when a guy is bringing flowers and the woment my wife saw that you know I mean she, I, you could see on her face she was just melting like an ice cube in a hot boiling water and then all the co-workers oh is this your husband oh he must love you and all of that little and then the rest of the girls oh those flowers are so pretty i'm like you don't even know nothing about flowers but it's just it just creates that creates that atmosphere when you say to someone i love you in front of other people <laughs> imagine god the father did that to jesus before any ministry was done before anything was done on this earth why is he doing that because he knows a principle he created himself if you're not empowered you can't expand if in front of other people in front of your siblings the only thing you were told is you were fat ugly and worthless and you'll never amount to do anything because you got f in your science or your math or your pe or whatever the thing that you got f in if that's the only words that you heard i'm going to tell you what happened to you somebody put a needle into your balloon and deflated you your prayer life your walk with God what it does is it's deflated it's withered away because the power you get to expand it does not come from your diploma or degree it comes from somebody walking in higher authority and saying it over you I bless you I am for you I'm not against you you will make it you are just wonderful you are just perfect for this and honestly everything is gonna be just fine with you if these words do not penetrate your heart you're gonna be walking around trying to prove something to someone you're gonna try to make A's to prove to your dad you're smart and when you bring the A's you realize he's drunk and he doesn't care you're trying to do this and that to prove to this person you're wrong and I am right and I can make it and most of the people can never prove other people wrong they actually prove other people right because empowerment for expansion comes from us receiving the approval not earning it Jesus proved the point you don't earn approval you receive it if somebody doesn't give you the approval stop fishing in that pond walk away roll up your nets and say you know what these people will never give me the approval and if I have to change my whole life to earn their approval it's not worth it I am going to put my fishing line into one pond called Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 it says the following blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus somebody say amen, amen. what this means is this God the Father maker of heaven and the earth has an assignment for your life and he gives you empowerment and this empowerment is that he himself says I am for you I love you I'm not against you and I'm gonna support you I don't have angry thoughts against you I don't have nasty feelings against you 
when I look at you I see a wonderful and fearful thing you see how the skin is stretched over a skeleton I see how your soul was worth to let my son leave the glorious garments of heaven be clothed in the dirty garments of the earth and die on a cross just for you just for you I know there's many people in the world even in your circle of friends who won't move a dime just for you but God says I'm not them I'm God and I love you you have to receive that you have to receive that and you have to receive that and you have to receive that because until this sinks in everything you will do you will try to either prove to something to someone or you will tr you will be running on empty if Jesus needed his dad to say from heaven I am well pleased with you before he could start a ministry so do you and Jesus did not do anything wrong we did many things wrong and we need our father's approval we need our dad who is in heaven to look at us and say I approve of you I love you and I am always going to be on your side many times we doubt this love that our dad has our father in heaven has and the reason why we doubt it is because we look at our circumstances and the circumstances scream volume of hate and all kinds of things to us for example there was a guy named John the Baptist and he was actually Jesus's cousin and he, when he was sitting in in prison things didn't work out well for Johnny and he was sitting in prison and he was hoping that he's gonna get a visit from Jesus the Messiah but what was happening is that Jesus the Messiah wasn't visiting Johnny Jesus was busy helping other people and so what happens is John once calls one of his disciples says could you go check on Jesus and ask him is he the Messiah or we should be waiting for another because John is frustrated. John is looking at his circumstances and, she's, and he's noticing Jesus is not paying much attention. It looks like Jesus doesn't even care. If he's the Messiah, he should be doing something about my imprisonment. I am imprisoned falsely. And Jesus looks at the disciples and gives them this kind of really crazy response. He says, don't tell John not to be offended at me. Blind are seeing, deaf are hearing, crippled are walking, dead are being raised. And he says, blessed is he who is not offended at me. And you're reading that and he's like, what does that mean? And the guys went to tell John a message. They, I don't think they fully understand it. When they left, Jesus checked. The door is closed. They're gone. He says, guys, come over here. He said, there's no John, the guy who's in prison right now, who's actually doubting that I am Messiah, but he said I am the Messiah. Do you know John? They said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we all know John. In fact, all of us got baptized by John. He said, do you guys know every man who was ever born out of a woman, there's no one greater than that man who's in prison full of doubts. That is the greatest man ever born on earth. I wish somebody would have recorded that and sent it to John. But nobody did sometimes when you feel at your lowest that's when God speaks about you at your highest that's why you cannot look at your circumstances you cannot look at your feelings to determine how God feels about you what you need to look at is what God says about you you cannot look at your prison and say oh this must be Jesus abandon me you gotta hear what Jesus is speaking about you and what he says in his word that is what he thinks about you not how much money you're making not the kind of car you're driving not the kind of brands you're wearing not the kind of school you are going and not the kind of zip code you are living in what matters today is what God is saying and he's saying I bless you I love you and I care for you can somebody say amen because of that we are thankful to God but with this also comes the responsibility that we read in Genesis 1 verse 38 God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful turn to your neighbor say be fruitful turn to your other, to your other neighbor say be mul say multiply <laughs> you first need to be fruitful and then you need to multiply if you're taking notes I want you to write down the second thing is that God wants us to know his his love so that we can be fruitful and what does that mean to us it means that so we can overcome our personal problems be fruitful meaning that your character will grow be fruitful means that your personal life will change it's interesting that when Jesus received this affirmation from his heavenly father 
when heavenly father on a big speaker pronounced that he is for him right after this the bible says jesus was led into wilderness to deal with demons on a very personal level when you begin to understand how much god loves you this must lead you to this step dealing with your personal inner demons and you got them i got them personal problems for some people their personal problems is the things they've had happen to them when they were little children some people were abused some were neglected some were actually physically suffered things that they are holding up inside and when they come to a church and they hear that God loves them something inside of them screams if he would love me he would never let that happen to me and if you keep listening to that devil's voice you won't like your life will never change but if you listen to the words voice that comes from God's word and you realize that things that have happened to you in your childhood God had nothing to do with that and God is telling you that he loves you and you allow that love that love can go as a force and begins to cleanse everything that you are carrying or been carrying from your childhood some people they were actually adopted and you know many times they grew up with this inside this insecurity I was never truly loved some people were raped at a date and they grew up grew up with this thing where you know what every man that will come into my life will do the same and they only attract losers because inside of them is still that pain God's love must first of all go inside of you to help you overcome your personal problems personal insecurities personal laziness personal things inside personal fears many people fear tomorrow and are guilty about yesterday and the guilt of yesterday and the fear of tomorrow robs them of the joy today and every day they walk full of sour full of emptiness why because personal problems are not dealt with and God's love is not an excuse to remain in sin God's love is the power to overcome your sin and first sin must be overcome on a very personal level if Jesus had to overcome demons in the wilderness after receiving God's love so do you when you hear about how much God loves you many people will sit and say Whew, I knew that there has to be there had to be something to it and you begin to kind of pat yourself on the back and say you know the pornography that I watched the masturbation that I participated in this person that I lied this person that I cheated and this person whose heart I broke and this person who I did this to and this person who I did this with and all of this and you begin to think say oh whew, load off let's go next week and get load again so that the next week Pastor Vlad or Pastor Vasily can give me another encouraging message remove all my junk so that I can be free to go fill it again and that's how many people live this cycle because they don't understand God said I love you be fruitful means overcome I don't love you to just cover everything and excuse everything I love you too much this wouldn't be love if I would be just covering your mess but I want you to overcome your mess overcome your insecurities the things that you have the shyness and the things that you commit because of your insecurities I want you to overcome that I give you that love so you will overcome your personal problems maybe you've spoken words against yourself and you've said things that are very negative you've said things that are very discriminating and diminishing God wants you to overcome that maybe your parents or somebody in the authority because of they didn't know better and they've spoke some things when you were uh, done something wrong and those words hurt you the point is not to go talk bad about your parents the point is that I'll receive God's love so it will help you to overcome your personal demons maybe you're addicted to pornography and you're just lust is just literally roaming in your mind you cannot control it and you come to church and you realize our church is full of beautiful girls and maybe it's even hard for you to be in church I've heard of some men who come and say it's hard to be in church I'm like that's not my problem what, what do you want I mean we have girls they get saved and they look beautiful but you must understand God loves you and you must receive that to overcome the personal lust problem that you have so that you can glorify Jesus and worship Jesus and be able to look at another person without any other alternative thoughts and that is possible Maybe you're sitting here today but your addiction is pot. 
you're smoking pot every day that's what helps you to be relieved of your stress and and it's just what helps you to deal with the, all of the stress that you got in your life I want to tell you something that God's love doesn't judge you God's love wants to help you overcome your addiction so that the money you spend on that you can spend on something else and instead of at night you know that you will the smoke that you will just simply get yourself in the word of God and snort that for some time can somebody say amen God wants to help you overcome your personal problems through his love don't use his love as an excuse to stay the way you are use his love as an empowerment to overcome where you are at it can help you overcome or you can be like Judas or I can be like Judas Judas was around this teaching that we're talking about every single day and Judas was stealing and but Jesus said nothing about it Jesus would always say these messages oh the father loves us he sent his son on the cross for us Jesus was like oh, whew, what I did yesterday I stole from that Pharisee guy whoo completely forgiven and Judas would continue to sin and sin and sin and he saw Jesus's love and Jesus's kindness he saw the fact that Jesus was always so kind to Judas he saw that oh this Jesus is fine with what I'm doing until one day this devil that Judas was playing with came for him one more time and the Bible says this time this devil didn't just torment Judas it came inside of Judas and you know where that happened right where Jesus was sitting the Bible says and Satan entered Judas you must overcome your personal problems why because Satan is going to stand there and wait if he sees you take the grace of God and don't use it to help you conquer him what he's going to do is he's going to see you are abusing grace of God he will push in slip in and then he will come inside and you will lose control and God will help you Jesus Judas was his disciple and not many feet away Judas is committing suicide because Satan is inside of him why because Judas was around this and Judas got this idea Jesus's love is to excuse my sin not knowing God anywhere God says I bless you it's so that you can be fruitful it's so that you can have power to overcome it's so you can come against your weakness come against your sin and say you know what I got you bad boy you're gonna be under my feet and you rise above that issue in Jesus name can somebody say amen? amen and so that's exactly what God tells to Adam we see this happening to Jesus is that when Jesus comes from the wilderness he conquers those demons he conquers the devil and he comes and his ministry begins to grow the Bible says he begins to heal the sick he begins to preach the gospel great things begin to happen crowds begin to gather at one time Jesus didn't even have time to eat because he, has, he was so busy and this is what happens with us I've noticed that in my life and I, I will know that about your life when you overcome your personal problems the world removes its limits for you for example when the person who was using drugs stops using drugs it's amazing how his potential begins to explore I'm looking at my cousin David you know and I remember him before where he would go to each phone company to take a phone so that he could sell it for drugs when he would go to an apartment just lease an apartment and disappear and just ruin his record everywhere his, his credit record and it's just literally it was a mess a life of him but then when you see Jesus helped him through his love overcome that addiction you see David struck he's posting a picture every day on Instagram <laughs> the pastor drove that truck it was good David drives that truck that truck is good <laughs> all the black rims you see the way David looks he looks completely handsome he looks he looks normal he looks good he, he was not like that man that he was here two years ago you see the way he works you see the way he talks because what happens when you receive God's love it helps you to conquer your problems when you conquer your problems limits go off person receives a license person receives connection other people begin to trust them with the job a person begins to grow in their finances relationships begin to mend things just literally his life begins to change as we see it with Jesus ministry just going through the roof why because when you overcome personal problems behind that it's more than just freedom behind victory it's successful life when you overcome insecurity when you overcome fear when you overcome guilt when you overcome your addiction it's not so you will save 20 bucks from cigarettes it's so that you will enter into a life that has no limits a life that has success and blessing from God can somebody say yes can somebody say amen, amen. do you want to have that life 
receive God's love and conquer your personal problems conquer your personal problems if you're constantly attracting losers and you realize you're a beautiful girl everything is fine with you you got a car you got a job but no brains meaning you're constantly attracting losers it's either a one loser or it's loser with a different name and a different skin color your goal is not to look for another guy and a christian single.com or christian mingle.com your goal is God give me that love that I didn't need to receive from my dad give me that love that I constantly got squashed with the boyfriends in middle school and high school God changed me inside and when God gives you a personal victory it's amazing how men that will come into your life who will not abuse you and use you but who's gonna bless you and first gotta overcome personal problems personal demons that cause other people with their demons to be so attracted to you can somebody say amen after we overcome our personal problems, when we become fruitful, world of limits begin to just be unlimited for us. We begin to just, just experience blessings of God. But that's not where everything ends. What I want to bring this to an end is where God said, multiply. And I look at the story of Jesus. And multiply means expand God's territory. I see Jesus overcoming the devil on a personal level. And then Jesus comes from this victory and he begins to preach and people begin to be healed. People begin to be saved. I mean amazing things are happening. Jesus walking on water. Jesus turning water into wine. Jesus cleansing the lepers. Jesus opening the eyes of people who are completely blind. All of these things are happening and while all of this is happening, God the Father has one more thing for Jesus to do and that is to gather 12 guys from all walks of life and be with them all the time that's where home groups came from so here is Jesus has a successful career thousands of people around him very popular he can do a lot of miracles and instead of asking the father give me bigger miracles instead of asking the father give me bigger crowds instead of asking his father can you give me a horse that can take me to Rome because I want to preach to Rome Jesus is asking the father father I know I never left my country to go very far I never traveled to the other side of the world I didn't even physically see Niagara Falls I never went to South Africa father I never went to Italy father I didn't go to those places and there's still miracles that I could do there's still people I can touch but dad I know my time is limited I am being fruitful but I gotta multiply I gotta find a home group I gotta find group of guys and I gotta spend every single day with them the temptation is this when you receive God's love you begin to overcome your personal problems when you overcome your personal problems you become successful when you become successful you become busy and when you become busy you usually don't have time or don't have motivation for the last the most important part in God's plan multiplication People say, I'm a businessman. I bring the money to church, but I don't have time to bring other people to church. I am in school. I have a job. I cannot lead a home group. I don't like to lead a home group. People have all kinds of excuses. Some people think they are too successful. Others think they are not too successful. That's why they cannot multiply. But if the Father in heaven had an assignment for Jesus after he was successful to multiply and gather few guys who at first were knuckleheads. These guys didn't want to do nothing with what he had for them. You and I have the same task. Idea for home groups didn't start with our pastor. Ideas for home groups started with our father. This was the idea for his kingdom to grow even when Jesus would go to heaven. And when Jesus went to heaven, the kingdom of God continued to spread. These 12 guys, they went and they found other guys. They went and they preached to other people. They did exactly what Jesus told them. And they preached to others and they preached to others. One of the guys that they preached to and led to Jesus was Philip. Philip moved in such a miracles of God that even Jesus didn't have in his life. 
At one time Philip was in one place and the Holy Spirit picked him up and transferred him into a completely different zone in a matter of seconds. This never happened to Jesus. Why this happened with these guys? Because Jesus was not distracted with success of his ministry to ignore the assignment of his ministry which was raise up other people. When your life gets successful you usually increase your bucket list. Bucket list is the place you want to see, the places you want to go and the things you want to do in life and it's good to have a bucket list but when you develop a bucket list and I've met young people, this special disease with young people and well actually those who are about to retire. When they have these things they want to do in life like you know go to Italy, go to Hawaii, go to um, Paris, go to which other places you guys you know. Great Wall of China, Greece, whatever you want to go. Usually people have places they want to all go to. And people have this idea that I have just a few more years and I really need to go there and I need to go there as soon as possible. Well the problem as a Christian you have to remember is this. Is when you're gonna die, we all gonna actually come back on this earth to reign for a thousand years. Why are we coming back for a thousand years to be here? Because most of us were so busy bringing other people to Jesus we didn't have time to visit all the cool places in the world. And so we're coming back and God's gonna say, well Jesus for example is gonna say, dad I'm gonna go to Niagara Falls because I was so busy making disciples and I died at 33, didn't have time to go there. And my great grandpa who sat in jail for the cause of Christ most likely is gonna say, I'm gonna go to Hawaii. And we're going to have 1,000 years to go to all of the cool places in the world. How awesome is that? So I want you to be relaxed. If you don't go to certain places while you're here, you're coming back. But remember this. You cannot bring other people to Jesus after you're gone. That is only can be done now. And that's why that's supposed to take a priority over your bucket list. That's why bringing other people to Jesus has to take a priority over you know all of the amazing dreams that many times cause you to say well I can't focus on souls, I can't focus on raising up leaders, I can't come to Friday night prayers, I can't come to leaders meetings, I can't come to home groups. Why? Because my life is just so busy, I just have three jobs, I have I work at night, I go to school, I just don't have time for this and the reason why I'm so busy is because I want to make all the money so I can live better than my parents, I can go see nice places, remember you're coming back for a thousand years relax <laughs> unless you're not coming back and you're going to hell and honestly work really hard because that's the only life you're gonna live in here unless then Joel Osteen's book title will be right for you your best life now because ain't nothing better coming after this For us as Christians, we relax. I want to visit Israel. I have a lot of things I want to visit to. But all of these things, they're not as important as one thing. For us to see people saved, people be raised up, leaders to be raised up, and the kingdom of God expand in our city for the glory of God. <laughs> Can somebody say amen? We are coming back on this earth and we're going to spend 1,000 years and we're going to do a lot of crazy things that we didn't get a chance to do now. But right now, let's maximize our life to do everything we can to see as many people come to Jesus Christ as we can. Can somebody say amen? Now I know about people one thing is that when we don't do this right now, when we receive God's love and we don't fix our problems and we don't help other people to come to Jesus, usually this is what happens. We receive God's love. Or we don't receive it and we just live in our sin. We don't overcome our personal insecurities. We don't overcome our personal problems. We live in that. We live in that and we say well things like home groups, things like reaching out to other people. Nah that's not for me. I'm just not outspoken. I don't want to shove my religion in other people's lives and I just, just want to respect other people. People have a right to believe what they want to believe. That's what America is all about and you have this kind of a weird, really weird idea about religion. But it's funny how when you begin to live a life of sin you don't sin alone for a very long time. Even the first sin that was committed on earth was by Eve and right away when Eve committed sin she shared it with her husband. When you are a sinner you will always bring other people with you. You will always introduce other people to it. 
whether it's weed whether it's smoking whether it's drinking whether it's sleeping around whatever it is you will you will not sin alone you're not going to lock yourself in the basement and just simply you know smoke pot until you drop dead no it's going to be with the homies and your cronies and that's what usually you develop a little home group where you become the home leader and say guys we got this today hey I just ordered this with this today and it's amazing how I don't want to be a home group leader for God of universe I want to be a home group for the devil I want to spread his kingdom and guess what happens when you begin to have a home group for the devil something happens you begin to expand his kingdom because whatever multiplies has dominion the Bible says be fruitful multiply fill the earth and have dominion and that's what God wants us to do is when we multiply we're gonna begin to fill tri cities with Jesus Christ and Jesus will have dominion over our city but when we have a lot of people whose brains are simply I don't want to do anything for the Lord and we just start to sin and bring other people into sin whether we realize it or not we are actually growing the devil's home groups and we don't want to grow devil's home groups we want to grow home groups for hungry generation for Jesus Christ and for the Holy Ghost somebody say amen somebody say amen say I'm gonna be a leader say I'm gonna be a good leader say I'm gonna bring the kingdom of God into every sphere of our society and our community for the glory of Jesus.